Well, traumatic show. Prepare yourselves for a traumatic interview. It's Boyd E versus <laughs> no. Donald Gleeson and Andrea Riseborough. Uh, welcome, Donald Gleeson and Andrea Riseborough, to the Pilot TV podcast. How's it going? It's going well, thank you. Great. How are you? I'm good. Actually, I'm recovering from a cold, but you don't need to know that. That's fine. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. If I told us, though, so we know. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've made it all about my cold already. Um, <laughs> Congratulations on Alison Jack. It's a it's a phenomenally uh, powerful piece of work um, for the two episodes that I've seen. Um, but it strikes me that it's not the kind of show you can pitch like in one sentence to you know to executives and stuff like that. Or did you did they, what is there a one sentence pitch for this show, or is it did you just have to kind of read the script and see the show to get what it's what it's kind of all about? No, there's not. There's not. A, um, I, I'm sort of of the belief that if you can pitch a show in one sentence, it's probably not worth making. Yeah, maybe. Although shark on a shark on a boat, you know really what I mean? That's what the, for me. Yeah, yeah, that's all you know about that movie. <laughs> it doesn't go any deeper. No, 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 yeah. It's definitely true. It's, you know, I guess it's sort of love over 20 years. I mean, I guess well, that's... Like, the didn't best. pitch it in one sentence. No. It's been in a sort of real answer to your question. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and not possible. And it was many things along the way. But actually, the kernel of what it what it was remained the same throughout which it, so i think we, we've been working we've been working on this five years probably mm-hmm. and um in the beginning of in its inception something starts off as this beautiful thing that everybody loves so much and doesn't want to change and then it goes through all of these different periods where it's suddenly about an exercise instructor and a dog and then it's about you know a whole bunch of things of an elephant and then it comes back to being about the thing that you started with and I think for the really wonderful projects it will come back and be what it was supposed to be in the first place <laughs> and so it went through a lot of different incarnations and it ended up exactly as it began <laughs> and that was because somebody had written something about something they'd experienced in their life and so that was the most authentic beautiful hilarious way to tell this quite broken story yeah yeah. So Victor Levin wrote in, he, you know, he he's kind of, I think, most known for comedies, for, you know, American sitcoms, he was showrunner on Mad About You, etc. So this feels like a departure for him as well. Did, was it was it his idea initially? Because I know you two were involved right from the beginning as as producers as well. Was it was it a kind of collaborative idea that came about? How did it come about? Uh, yeah, it's incredibly personal to Vic, this story. I think the reason he went as deep as he has with the stories because it means that amount to him. I think the fact that he's a very funny man who can write very, very funny one-liners and back and forths really shows in the series and helps elevate and keep light uh, and give moments of reprieve from the moments of our heartache in between romance and and the love. Um, but yeah, so, so he had written actually the first script and the last script, which is really unusual like very much a limited series. This this is like one story told fully. So I think what we both read was the first episode, the last episode, and you could see where it was going. And so Andrea was on before me, joined on the thing. When I then heard about it, Andrea was on board. That made me want to, and I'd already read the scripts weirdly even before that, but like Andrea being there was like, okay, well now we really, really have something in the mix of the scripts and Andrea and then this incredible uh, the first director we got on was Yuho uh, Kuosmanen, who I'm still saying his name wrong, which is terrible because I give out Kuosmanen. Kuosmanen. I was really nowhere near. I know, and I I give out to I, I I give out to people for not saying my name right. Right, is yeah. absolutely not cool. Let's cut that. Yeah. Let's just no. call him Yuho. Let's just yeah, call Yuho. Yuho. Okay, and then okay. Hong well, you... also came on board, but they're amazing filmmakers, like filmmakers, not people yeah. who come in to direct episodes of TV, which is tough and great job with their filmmakers. So that combination felt like we really, really gave it a chance of what Andrea was saying earlier, which is making it the thing that it's supposed to be and not just the thing that'll do. And that's what really, I mean, that to Vic's, Vic's writing is so rhythmic and funny and heartfelt and accessible. And to have that, but then captured in a really cinematic way is why... You know, I I, I went, uh, I really fought for Yuho to be part of the project and I went to Finland to persuade him um, to do it. 
not that it, I mean, not that he needed persuading in so many ways. It was so beautiful, but it, but persuading because it was quite an extraordinary thing for a, for an independent filmmaker of two really well received um, independent films to then decide to do something episodic was quite an unusual mm -hmm. um, departure. And the same for Hong, our other director, who's uh, had great success at Sundance. And so that was a really exciting, unusual environment for us to be working in. Uh, and we also didn't actually have um, a platform. And so, although we've been on it for five years, you know, this is something that since its very beginnings, I mean, it's it's been brewing in Vic for over 30 years, probably, yeah. and it's absolutely a story. Um, and it's so wonderful that it, we were able to capture it in such an unusual way, I think, and and, and a way that is so personal and heart, heartfelt because it is as much as it's hysterically funny in many in many parts as is life such life it's also um it's heartbreaking because love is love can be mm. uh, it is absolutely heartbreaking yeah i'm going to get you to describe each other's characters so donna what do you think how would you describe alice i think when you meet them the jack is a, is an open book and Alice, I, I think, keeps more of herself from Jack uh, up front. I'm, I'm, I'm really wary of describing Alice's character because is she's not mine. But, but, I, but I think that that's uh, true of her. And I think she she's amazingly generous, but not in an obvious way. So she's obviously incredibly intelligent. She's fierce in some ways. But when she finds love, which is not necessarily expected, or finds a soulmate, which is not necessarily expected, her way of being generous is to protect that person from the aspects of, of herself, which maybe she's afraid of or finds difficult or something like that. Is that fair? That's yeah. beautiful. And so I think that's, that's she operates in a very, very generous way, but in a way that can also be brutal. And that's, I mean, that's not all of her character, but in terms of how she relates to Jack, that's what it is. And then she finds in somebody, somebody who uh, awakens part of her um, that she maybe didn't even know was there. And that fuels a lifetime of trying and loving and heartache. And I think that's the bit where herself and Jack cross over, is that one fact that happens to both of them. That's, that's Alice, I think, a bit. What, why, why did you um, want us to describe each other's characters? Um, because I quite because I always I, actors always describe their own characters, and I just thought it was an interesting, slightly way, different way of uh, yeah, approaching yeah. it. Mainly, um, it is interesting. yeah, yeah. It's um, the it's it's difficult for me to objectively describe Jack's character because I because I see him through the lens through Alice's lens, and I'm sure. sure Donald has the same experience. That was exactly, yeah, yeah. That was exactly yeah. what I was battling with there. Um, yeah. So the way that Alice sees him, I think I can best speak to that probably. Sure, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. have opened with that disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disclaimer on one take, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. yeah, yeah. Um, well, the way that Alice sees him is is just innately good. Um, And that doesn't take into account all of the times, now I'm looking at it, it objectively as, as Andrea, it doesn't take into to account all of the times that he um, is unable to see those around Alice because of his great devotion to her. So, um, but she sees him as generous, unjaded, pure, um, and a little fuddly. <laughs> you know, Fair. he sort of fuddles about a bit, which is which is very charming and um, deeply charming. She's 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 deeply in love with him. She sees him as otherworldly in the sense that he he, he represents a, the other half that makes up her whole experience of life. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's a scene in the in the in the art gallery in the first episode where we see Alice maybe at her worst, and I I thought that was very you know I kind of thought I, that these kind of people do get 
into these situations where they end up being horrible to other people. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Very human. Is that that's a, that felt like a key scene to me because you see you suddenly see a side to Alice that is maybe you kind of been brewing, but but that kind of all comes out in that moment. Isn't it funny that we're having this, this conversation about how human a moment in television is? Yeah. Um, which begs the question: Should we be having more of those moments? Mm. It would be much easier to skip over that moment. It would, be. right? You know what I mean? Like it would be much easier not to present that, and, and, and just it. to have some extra thing be the thing that makes them kind of swerve away from each other or have an argument, yeah, or whatever like that, and just something. But no, like I love that, and thereby preserve human. the sort of moral integrity of the, of yeah. the two characters, so that we, can... yeah you know, truck on with them through life. But I think we've all had the experience of being an exploding doormat, haven't we? And in that moment, that's Alice's mm. that's Alice's big explosion in different ways. I mean, she's far more uh she's far more, she lives very candidly in the world. She's unfiltered, a very an unfiltered presence. And that's a suit of armor. It's really a suit of armor and it's been yeah. a coping mechanism for a long time. But in this moment where she explodes <laughs> Uh, in the art gallery, you know, we've all had those really difficult days where you there's an awful lot going on. It may be historical. It could be right now in the present, and then it comes out of the bus driver, or it comes out of the, you know, and and you feel, and she feels absolutely dreadful after it. There's no kind of she doesn't revel in that. There's a huge amount of self hatred attached to it. The way that she deals with it is by trying to completely brush over it, of course, which is not one of her most fine hours. No, no. But it's so important because also in that moment, Jack also, Jack doesn't stand up for himself with Alice all the time because he's so devoted to her immediately and so in love with her. But actually, if you look at the series and the course of the series, and even what happens in those first two episodes, Jack behaves way worse with other people. With people that really matter to him, not just people he meets for a day and who will forget about him by tomorrow. Jack really hurts people, but really hurts people with his devotion to Alice. Uh, not on purpose, but he behaves in a way that in a way is, is more unforgivable. Uh, but because his... Uh, motives are clearer in those moments. We perhaps are willing to forgive a little more. Obviously, what happens with Alice in that scene is it's coming from, there's a reason for it. She's not just nasty. Even Jack in that moment goes, that's not cool, but it's like, he he knows there's something in there. There's coming from a place and eventually he will love her all the more for it. But we just all have tricky, tricky moments. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was just going to say, I think also Alice's candor is arresting um, for lots of reasons. But but partly because she's uh, a woman and she says exactly what's going on in her head. And she's quite she's quite an alpha woman. She works in a, in the finance industry and is in, it, it harnesses and wields a great deal of power in lo in lots of ways and it's it's quite a sort of strange and intimidating character, quite an abrasive character to be faced with in in a as as a female protagonist. And so in those moments, where she says to Amy Lou Wood's character, "You can't be my friend. I pay you." But we're just completely, <laughs> absolutely honest. She's just being really, really honest. But there's something in there also that I hope that the audience sees where she's asked, where she's saying, I, I, you are my friend. Of course, my friend, you know, I, I, I recognize that. And you're probably my only one. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe as Jack, Jack, I feel like when with Ashley B's character comes into the picture, I, I, um, Jack is kind of too honest in a way. Like she accuses him at one point of being too honest. You didn't have to, if you'd have just lied about, a particular thing without spoiling anything it would have been easier all around no and not not just not just easier but like i think in those moments jack has a code that he thinks the right thing to do uh, there's no perspective he applies no perspective to it and again it's not because he wants to be hurtful he's really really trying to be a good person as is as is alice it's just he tries in such a way that he like he really causes chaos to other people and but it's all 
some part of him just is just cannot get away from the fact that in the world there is one person who he will always miss and always love. But that's his like that's his cross to bear. He shouldn't make it, uh, you know, Ashling's cross to bear. Anybody else's cross to bear. He does, and I think that's very true to life. I think that happens all the time. And I think there are moments where you're like, would you please cop yourself on and behave like a grown up? It's almost childish at times, you know. Um, but he's just, he just cannot get past the fact that he tries to kill the part of himself that loves Alice. He, 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 he tries to get rid of it because actually his life would be, he thinks better without it at times. But he will just, all, as soon as he catches sight of her in a room, he's like, no, that's where my heart is. It's, he's in a tough spot, but yeah, he doesn't always... He doesn't always handle it brilliantly. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, I could talk about the the the, the, car, the rest of the car. I mean, Ashley B, for example, again, you know, mostly known for comic comedy stuff, but she she's put through the ringer. She has to do a lot of, of difficult stuff in this show. What was it like working with her? I um, <clears throat> absolutely loved it. I think the the whole point with that relationship was to try and create something that you could really believe in. Um you know, with whatever spoiler alert or whatever like that, but that doesn't, you know, that he walks away from for something which seems to be perhaps more hurtful, you know what I mean? Like for everybody, um, like Alice included, you know what I mean? But the point was to try and create something beautiful, slightly simpler, but still very beautiful with, with Ashling. And she's just, she's an amazing, as, as um, Andrea pointed out, just before we were talking to you, she's saying like, she's all like all those, that group, amazing writers, uh, comedy, but also everything else. Like they're all really, really funny people in this in in, in the cast. <laughs> they assembled around us, and Ashling is. But I mean, I, I, it's no surprise to me that Ashling is such a good dramatic actor. She's been doing that for a long time now, as well as all the comedy stuff. She's super, and I think she's wonderful in the show. I think she did a brilliant job, as did uh, Amy Lou Wood and, and Sunil Patel. They just did such amazing work of making this like a real world and a really funny world. Yeah. Uh, Sunil Patel does a brilliant job as your as your mate, who's kind of like the voice of truth, it feels like, for you, for your character. He found, yeah, and a lot of those lines, I think, would have been really, really, really hard to pass off. I think in terms of, like, on the page, they read really funny, and then when you ask people to say them out loud, they were nightmarish to say out loud and, and still keep real. He found an angle on it. I don't yeah. know how he did it, but yeah. he found an angle on it that was both funny and real at the same time. Um, and yeah, I thought it was a really tricky part to pull off in a way. And he just made it really human and very, very funny. He did a great job. But like, yeah. you know, Amy, Lou and, Amy and, and Ashling, similarly, just amazing life in those performances. I just love it. Very yeah, Amy, Amy Lou were fantastic. Who, who, you know, we know from Search Education, but she's getting big lead roles and stuff that are amazing to see her in a, a smallish role, but like key figure and, 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 and kind of a brilliant foil for you as well. I think Andrew. I mean, that's to do with Andrew. That's to do with you, right? I, I did. I, I did want Amy Lou to play that part. She's she's a, one of those performers that, that that on set when she finishes speaking, the crew takes a silent exhale and then laughs. Usually, <laughs> <laughs> um, she's she's just really. I, I, I was such a joy to work with her. I've worked with her, with her before. That's how I know her. We played sisters. And um, it was wonderful to work with her again. And, and Ashling and Sunil just are, the three of them really are so brilliant. And to have that kind of, to have the need you know, for, for us, to have the knowledge that there's this incredible safety net of ingenuity and, mm. um, you know, emotional breadth and hysterical laughter that may pop out in any at any given time from these three supporting roles and they're and they're, they're just vital they make up the fa fabric of the piece so it's, it's amazing I, that sounded like such a you make up the fabric of the piece it was a good sentence yeah no i, I like it, it like i was making a quilt no yeah 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 but it is a it's a patchwork of no i'm gonna i'm not gonna yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen interviews where Andrew, you said you like to stay so, quite silent before during filming before a scene. Is that did you did you manage to sit sit together and just be silent and have that moment, or did you go for something different? I think we both have that a bit. Can do depends on the energy required in the scene sometimes, exactly. doesn't it? Yeah, I mean sometimes we would just 
laughing hysterically about something. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, I'm not not a massive talk. I mean, love talking. Mm. <laughs> able, <laughs> able to do it <laughs> when <Yeah>. required. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but uh, there's a, I, I suppose there's a, it's just a very strange job. I spend a lot of time speaking over and over again. I mean, obviously that's one thing in theatre when you harnessing verse or you know whatever. That's that's a completely different thing. But when you in film and in television, over and over again, you're required to. explore the nuances of one moment over and over again so beforehand I suppose I'm maybe just saving up energy for the marathon mm. ahead fair enough yeah yeah you said you I know you said Nick Cage had a similar approach um when I you worked with him that because I knew exactly where you yes <laughs> that's where yeah 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 so how does Donald compare obviously <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. It's the one I've been wanting Pleasure. to ask the whole. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought so. I thought well, I'd go. I thought I'd ask something deliberately provocative. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. the answer is, <laughs> <laughs> how do I compare it to Nick Cage? Um, <laughs> you can just pass if you want to me. I. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think she, I think I think I'm just going to enter and give a good answer. To this me. is what yeah. I would ask just before we'd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they'd say rolling. Yeah, I'd say yeah. how compared to Nick Cage, it's like how yeah. there's a piece of string, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah, yeah, similar. Yeah, <laughs> it's unquantifiable. <laughs> questions, Fair enough. Uh, questions like that are just uh, the, I know the answers to them are yeah. I love I know. it. I love it. That's a map. <laughs> I was being cheeky, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> no, we're not going to get asked that question again today. I, 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 I bet that's the. Oh, well, that's yeah, that's good to that know. It's a good thing. That's good to know. That's that's <laughs> something. That's yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. I want to. I do. I'll, finally, I do want to ask you about your your products that are coming out because Andrew, you're in um, the regime with Kate Winslet, Hugh Grant, Matthias Schoenarts. That looks incredible from what I've seen. How how was that for you? It was extraordinary. Um, uh, Stephen Frears and Jessica have directed it. Uh, I mean, it, it was a really wonderful thing. It's it's. I'm really really crap at giving you a, an explanation of what it's like. I, I had a. Sure. I had a fantastic time and i'm uh, absolutely loved playing that character and how do i compare to Kate winslet <laughs> yeah right exactly how do i compare exactly. to Kate winslet? well i was gonna say to you no donald i was gonna say to you you're in echo valley with julianne moore and sydney sweeney yeah. i mean yeah that's a good that's a good lineup yeah absolutely amazing incredible actors both and i mean they're very much the heart of that story i kind of breezy and i actually took i took uh, almost a year off work after we finished Alice and Jack. I really felt like we put a lot Sorry. into it. Yeah. Exhausted. Yeah, exhausted. Yeah, I yeah. really felt like I really, we put like we did, yeah. everything into that, like everything in. So I took a long time off. I had the privilege of being able to, but I took a long time off after that. And so uh, working with Julianne and Sydney was my first time. And in a fantastic director called Michael Pierce, it was my first time back on set in like 10 months 11 months and um yeah loved it but like extraordinary yeah extraordinary actors and really really totally different processes to each other as we all have and i loved seeing that up close and how they made it sing it was really really like a privilege you know yeah i've been on a very very lucky run with the actors i've worked with recently andre included obviously Obviously. obviously, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I won't ask how she compares to Julianne Moore. That would be the, that would be the. Uh... They're both amazing. That's the right. Yes. That's what you should have said. They're both amazing. Yes. Perfect. You should have said. Yeah. Both amazing. No. Uh, um, amazing. There we go. Finally, can we end on that? <laughs> Absolutely, we're ending on that. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. And congratulations on on a fantastic show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being so nice, bit too. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.